statement just made, and uh, I thank Protocol for escorting His Excellency. The Assembly will hear an address by His Excellency uh, Kasea Natano, uh, Prime Minister of Tuvalu. Uh, I request Protocol to escort His Excellency. I have great pleasure in welcoming His Excellency Kasaya Natano, Prime Minister of Tuvalu, and uh, I invite him to address the Assembly. Mr. President, distinguished members of the General Assembly, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Government of Tuvalu, I congratulate you on your election as President of the 77th session of the United Nations General Assembly. Tuvalu has full confidence in your leadership. And let me also take this opportunity to thank the President of 76th session, the Honorable Minister Abdullah Sahid, for a very successful session under the leadership despite the challenges due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Mr. President, we welcome the pragmatic vision of your presidency of the 77th session of the UN General Assembly. We applaud you for the theme of your presidency, a watershed moment, transformative solutions to interlocking challenges. Indeed, we must strengthen our commitment to upholding the core principles of the UN Charter at this watershed moment. We maintain that the UN Charter is our shared constitutive instrument to maintaining international peace and security, developing friendly relations among nations, and promoting social progress, better living standards, and human rights. We are indeed encouraged by the priorities of your presidency, and we look forward to working closely with you as we continue to grapple with economic recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic, tackle climate change, and strive to achieve the sustainable development goals. Mr. President, Global crises have become more complex, interlinked, and transparent in their impacts, demanding global cooperation and solidarity to formulate and implement sustainable solutions. It requires all the partnerships we need to bring about positive changes to people's lives. It is, however, regrettable that the Republic of China, Taiwan, with its notable partnerships on a wide range of development issues, continues to be kept out of the United Nations systems. Tuvalu has significantly benefited from our partnerships. In agriculture, food security, public health, medicine, clean energy, including our recovery from economic and social impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. Tuvalu strongly supports the readmission of the Republic of China, Taiwan, into the UN as a founding member of the United Nations, and its active participation in the UN specialized agencies including the World Health Organization, the International Civil Aviation Organization, and the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. We must not sideline Taiwan, a vibrant democracy that has made significant progress on all the sustainable development goals and ready to contribute more in global efforts in achieving the SDGs. 
It is also regrettable that the people of Cuba continue to face the economic burden of long unilateral economic blockades. The economic blockades neglected the human rights and the spirit of cooperation espoused in the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Keeping these measures in place deprived Cuba of the international development assistance and partnerships to recover and build back better. Mr. President, in the same vein, we reiterated the strong concerns of our region of the potential threat of nuclear contamination to the health and security of the Blue Pacific, its people and prospects, and reaffirmed the importance of ensuring international consultations, international law, and independence and verifiable scientific assessments. These principles must govern the deployment and use of nuclear technology and the discharge of nuclear materials and waste into our Blue Pacific continent. We maintain that the UN decolonization process is critical to the protection of human rights, including the rights of self-determination and urge meaningful engagement of the UN with all relevant partners and stakeholders to the decolonization process. Mr. President, let me now speak of an issue that is of the greatest concern to my country, climate change, and its consequence for sea level rise remain the single greatest existential threat my country faces. Underscoring the urgency to limit global warming to 1.5 decrees through rapid, deep, and sustained reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. At an average land elevation of no more than two meters above sea level, my country will succumb to sea level rise. The IPCC report issued last year is clear that at the current global warming trends, we are destined to miss the 1.5 decrease target of the Paris Agreement. This clearly means that Tuvalu will be totally submerged within the century. Mr. President, the climate crisis is creating an increasingly uncertain future for people in most parts of the world. Paradoxically, in my region, the Pacific, it is making our future increasingly certain, but not in a way that it gives us any kind of comfort. During this century, several Pacific Island nations will become mostly uninhabitable. For my country, Tuvalu, which sits halfway between Hawaii and Australia. This could happen in the next two to three decades. Other Pacific Island countries in the climate change front line may have a few decades longer, but our final destination is no longer a matter of guesswork. Most societies see climate change as mainly about cutting carbon emissions or mitigating future impacts, we are facing a looming situation far more profound. The near certainty of terminal inundation. Our peoples in my generation or the next will be unable to exist on the islands that have nurtured our ancestors for centuries. It is our God-given home. Mr. President, Tuvalu and Pacific neighbors have done nothing to cause climate change. Carbon emissions combined across the entirety of Pacific Islands amount to less than 0.03%. 
of the world's total. Even less if, the, if we speak of historical emissions, the existential threat we face is not of our making, but it will remake us. How we will negotiate this remaking is a question that the international community must now urgently begin to address. Major economies which have the highest contribution to greenhouse gas emissions cannot be obvious and do nothing. People everywhere, across all ages and walks of life, are demanding leadership on climate change, especially from those most able to provide it. Tuvalu is an acid test of leadership because if the international community allows an entire country to disappear from climate change, what hope will be possible for anyone else? Mr. President, these are unprecedented times. Science cannot tell us exactly when our homeland will become uninhabitable, but it does tell us how. As the ocean rises, salt water permeates into the aquifers that provide our drinking water. Now, in many places, our water security is severely compromised. A rising ocean brings higher tides, and with increasing storm frequency and intensity, our villages and agriculture are devastated. Flooding leaves soil saline, reducing crop yields, severely compromising our food security. Infrastructure such as homes, roads, and power lines are washed away and higher land on which to rebuild does not exist. Mr. President, the precious coral that supports our tourism and nurtures our fish dog perish as the ocean warms and acidifies. The cost of eking out an existence of maintaining the status quo increases for individuals and the entire country, over time becoming too much to bear. Such extremities push citizens to live. The nation itself becomes increasingly incoherent, legally and spiritually rooted to a shoreline that is disappearing under rising tides. This is how a Pacific atoll dies. This is how our islands will cease to exist. This is not about some future scenario. It is what we are living with now. Mr. President, inaction brings responsibilities. Tuvalu have not yet reached the end of this process of salination, destruction, degradation and demise. But we are well past the beginning. Despite international agreements and repeated commitments, global greenhouse gas emissions continue to rise. With many countries still pursuing a future fueled by coal, oil, and gas. This is the first time in history that the collective action of many nations, or more accurately, the collective inaction of many nations will be responsible for making sovereign countries uninhabitable. It is an unprecedented crisis requiring radical intervention. Mr. President, current international instruments such as the Convention on Statelessness, do not cover our situation. Neither does the United Nations' various efforts to address climate change. Agreements reached at the annual summits 
including last year's COP26 in Glasgow, cover a wide range of issues like targets for cutting emissions or commitments for international finance to address impacts. But with regard to looming unhabitability of sovereign states, they say nothing. Mr. President, this is why Tuvalu and the Marshall Islands launched the Rising Nation Initiative two days ago to fill the current gaps in awareness, legal framework, and political commitment. The global community must begin a serious and responsible dialogue that acknowledges both the realities and the rights of the Pacific Island nations such as mine, and more fundamentally, of our citizens. Mr. President, this is about sovereignty, dignity, and integrity. We need a global settlement that guarantees nation states such as Tuvalu and the Marshall Islands a permanent existence beyond the inhabitable lifetime of our actual homes. Irrespective of the onslaughts of climate change and sea level rise, it must recognize and protect our cultural integrity, our human and economic capital, and our sovereignty. It must be co-created and enacted with the people and governments of island nations, not visited upon us by others. Mr. President, this settlement includes, ultimately, the protection of our rights to our land and ocean, preserve our heritage and sovereign rights to govern our citizens. We do not seek to move out of our homeland. We seek fair and amicable treatment of displaced people so we do not become a burden on others. But equally, natural justice dictates that we are not fought off with a wasteland. Economically, we can continue to support ourselves. In the case of Tuval, for example, using income from the continued sustainable use of the exclusive economic zone around our islands, finding the right solution will require statement statementship and empathy, beginning with an acknowledgement that the situation globally caused must also have a globally just and equitable solution. Mr. President, as Pacific peoples, we raise our children to respect the ocean, land, and sky as providers of life. Now, through no fault of our own, we will soon have to abandon the oceans, land, and sky that have forged our cultures and identities for centuries. We neither castigate nor demand charity, but we do ask for generosity of spirit, support, and justice that recognize our reality and our grave concern on the potential eradication of our actual nations due to rising sea levels in our part of the world. Mr. President, I thank you for your attention. To Valu On behalf of the Assembly, uh, I wish to thank the Prime Minister of Tuvalu for the statement just made, and uh, I thank Protocol for escorting His Excellency. I now give the floor.